Hang on one second. We're going live. Welcome. Welcome everyone to my Wednesday weekly voice, music, and marketing. Um, I go live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, for those joining through Instagram, give me a wave, give me a shout out in the comments. For those joining on YouTube, um, give me a heart, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and those on Facebook also give me a heart or a thumbs up. Let me know that you're here. Uh, feel free to add the uh, state or country that you're tuning in from. I love to see how global we are. And uh, today's uh, conversation is about time management. Um, hello, Cooley. Hello, Dory. Hello, everyone. Hi, Easy Breezy. Hi, Danielle on the keys. So good to see everybody. Peter, Peter Knight, good to see you here. Maggie Jane, good to see you. A new friend on IG. Denmark is in the house. Bahrain is in the house. Bahrain, Bahrain. New York City in the house. Cincinnati, so excited. Okay, so for those of you, uh, hey, Colorado, Massachusetts, for those of you on IG that might want a more stable signal, for some reason, IG has just been giving us trouble for the past month, couple months. So the stream is more stable on YouTube. It just, <laughs> it just interrupted. The stream is more stable on YouTube and not more stable. It is stable on YouTube if you want to go over there and see us. So today I'm talking about time management for musicians, how to get more done and save time in the process. Denise Marie, good to see you, my dear. It's been, it's been a minute, yeah? Um, a quick announcement before I get into talking about time management and how important it is. Um, and what is time, right? And how we lasso time or get our, wrap our brains around time. A quick announcement, our Step Up to the Spotlight program, it's our six week Kickstart Arts Development program that I just completely renovated. Um, I started Step Up, I think in 20, when was that 2012? I think it's 12 years ago. Yeah. And I renovated it, re redid it, completely refurbished it um, at the top of last year. And, and um, we, we, we went free with step up at the pandemic in 2020. We brought in like 5,000 people. It was just an incredible in infusion of artists really doing the work. Um, and we decided this year, just a couple weeks ago, we uh, decided to do a free trial with Step Up. So then we went back to a paid program and then we just decided to go back to a free trial. So the brand new version for those of you that are older Step Uppers or for those of you that have not taken uh, the, the artist development program Step Up, there's a free trial now, and that free trial gives you 10 days to the entire program, so it's not dripped any longer. Um, it, we do recommend it being a six-week program, but this program is the foundational piece that you need no matter where you are in your career. If you have not done this program, you need to do it right away. The information in these six modules alone will save you thousands of dollars and years of heartbreak absolutely guaranteed. And it now is available for free for the first 10 days. You get access to the entire series, um, the entire uh, with 30 worksheets and all of my calendars. And I'm mentioning it because I'm going to talk about time management today. And I organized several different calendars for people that have a full time job, a nine to five or that kind of job that takes up a lot of their time. And for people then that do have the luxury of doing music full time. There's two calendars in step up in the in module one that actually so just go and get that get access to it now uh, so that you can get those calendars. You can cancel within those 10 days and then I'm gonna put it in the um, in the chat here in YouTube. Um, and you can cancel before 20 days and and you still get that stuff. You just have to download it. The modules are not downloadable. Those are only streamable with membership. Uh, and then it's a very low price. I think it's a 197. There's three payments. So all of you watching, this is the most important thing that you need to do right away. Okay. Now to go into the topic, entire six week program is 197. Mm -hmm. 
So now to go into the topic. So the first thing that I really want to talk about is organizing your time into sectors, right? Into, into you know, this is the time that I spend for my day job. This is the time that I spend for social media and marketing. This is the time that I spend on my daily musicianship practice. This is the time, and, and, and this is the time I spend on my music, right? So it's like day job, um, social media, music, and then family or other obligations, right? So think about how much time you wanna spend in those areas. So your day job, ideally 30 to 35 hours a week, or maybe you have a 40 hour a week, especially as a musician, it's best to have a job that gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, I recommend, you know, jobs where you work 30, 30 to 35 hours, um, you know, a good five days a week, four or five days a week gives you more flexibility. That way you can work on, you have more time to work on your music because as you're working on your music, it really is a full-time job, but it's difficult to give it that much time and attention when you have uh, another job that is bringing in the revenue for you. But if we don't, you know, a lot enough time to the music, we can't get it to that place where it's bringing in revenue for you. And then social media, I recommend anywhere from two to three hours a week, 30 minutes a day or such. Um, maybe one day a week, you spend a little more time planning your posts, that kind of thing. And then creating music, here's what I recommend. So those of you that have been following me for a while, I recommend 20 minutes a day using the cold vocal method. My technique in 20 minutes a day will actually get you, uh, move you along further than longer practices, fewer times a week. So we've done this research over the past almost 40 years now, and we've discovered that and it's the same with athletes or musician instrumentalists. You know, we find that it's the frequency that actually improves long term the skill. So we recommend 20 minutes a day using the cold vocal method because not all vocal methods are created equal and can get you there as quickly. And you would start with the singer's gift warm up. Then you would join our vocal freedom circle and get the masters. And then you would do the masters to really voice build on days that you're not performing and you're not rehearsing on a professional level because you want to get that voice building in. Then we recommend 20 to 30 minutes a day of an instrument then we recommend 20 to 30 minutes a day of your songwriting, including two sessions a week that are longer sessions for songwriting. So maybe an hour and a half to two hours, twice a week, and then once a week demo recording. So really getting good at making demos at home, becoming really uh, in improving your ear by recording your own vocals. And I know some of you are already doing this, but I'm just going through the list so that you have it, okay? Um, because the most important thing, and then you also, this is one of the problems, is not realizing how much time things take. So outside of that time, you need some time for learning and researching uh, new things. I would put that on the weekend, you know, maybe one to three hours. And then music career and business, I'd put that on the weekends, maybe one to three hours for planning right? Because we, we don't, uh, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan, right? And so we always need to be prioritizing, which is going to lead me into tip number two, I'm going to do three tips today, of five tips that are on the blog. So each week, I put out a fresh weekly blog. And then I do a live on that subject. But if you want to go to the blog, it's all written out for you. So you don't have to sit there and scribble right now to get all of the details. Okay. So if you go to the blog, the live, this, the week of the live is always the fresh weekly blog. So the time management blog is the blog that's just released uh, uh, today on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday we release a blog. So all of that is detailed for you if you want to go and get a screenshot of that. Um, so basically, that is giving you about weekdays to work on your music. Um, the summary of that is during the week, you would spend about eight hours on your music using that plan and about 10 hours on the weekend. So that's 18 hours. That's fitting it into a full-time job. And, and that, you know, 
deciding, and you may not have that much time, you may have family requirements, you may have other things that are going to pull you away. I understand you have to make this work for you. You have to make this real for you. So these are just my suggestions. You can adjust that as needed. But this is, I, I manage a lot of artist careers and develop a lot of artist careers. And this to me is the minimum to really make progress to move forward. Um, so this is what I recommend. The next thing, and before I get into it, I do want to make one comment on how time is perceived differently in different cultures, right? And this is a very interesting uh, thing to think about and look at, especially, you know, people in America versus Europe versus uh, Asia, different parts of the world think about time differently, and it affects the goals that we set and how we work uh, within the time that we have, right? So differences in the way a culture views time can affect the way their time is managed, right? So the linear perception, and this is also on the Instagram post, when is, was that post? Yesterday. So the time, the post on time about lassoing time is on the Instagram with this information. It's also on the blog. Um, but the linear perception of time is predominant in America with most North European countries like Germany, Switzerland, England. People in these cultures tend to place a large value on productive time management and tend to avoid decisions or actions that would result in wasted time. So this view of time correlates to these cultures being more monochronic or preferring to do one thing at a time. Another cultural view. So if you're from that cultural view, uh, give me a thumbs up or give me a heart in the, in the comments. Is that where you reside? And would you consider yourself putting a large value on productive time management? And tend to avoid decisions or actions that would result in wasted time. Yes. So this is more the Western mindset. Another cultural time view is the multi-active time view. In multi-active cultures, most people feel that the more activities or tasks being done at once, the better. Uh, this creates a sense of happiness. Multi-active cultures are polychronic or prefer to do multiple tasks at once. It's a cool, fun image, right? Like, <laughs> you know, cleaning the floor with your foot and, and doing this with this hand and writing with the other, right? So that'd be a cool meme. Uh, the multi-active time view is prominent in most Southern European cultures, such as Spain, Portugal, and Italy. In these cultures, people often tend to spend time on things they deem to be important, such as placing a high importance on finishing social conversations, in business environments, they often pay little attention to how long meetings last. Rather, the focus is on having high quality meetings. In general, the cultural focus tends to be on synergy and creativity over efficiency. Anyone here from Spain, Portugal, Italy, that Southern European countries, I would probably include France in that and um, Switzerland, well, Switzerland even, anybody here from those cultures. A final cultural time view is the cyclical time. So we're talking about linear time in the West. We're talking about, um, which is more monochronic, one thing at a time, multi-culture, uh, multi-active cultures, which are polychronic or prefer to do multiple tasks at once. And the final cultural time view is cyclical time view. Uh, time is considered neither linear nor event-related. And this is mostly in Asia, including Japan and China. Um, it is more important in cultures with cyclical concepts of time to focus on completing tasks correctly. Thus, most people will spend more time thinking about decisions and the impact they will have before acting on their plans. Most people in cyclical cultures tend to understand that other cultures have different perspectives and are cognizant of this when acting on the global stage. But how that might affect you is, and this ties into any of those uh, different ways of perceiving time. One, I think of the, one of the problems or one of the challenges that we have as entrepreneurs, musicpreneurs, entrepreneurs, is deciding which thing to focus on, right? So, and, and one of the mistakes that we can make or things that falls through the cracks very easily is how much time that 
uh, project is going to take in the creation time and in the delivering deliverable time. For example, you might want to do a podcast, right? Oh, I want to do a podcast. I want to get the word out on, you know, things that are important to me. Well, how much creation time is that going to take and how much uh, execution time or actual time in the podcast uh, and then the weekly time each week prepping for that. And that that helps you make the decision as to what do you want to spend your time doing, right? If you want to do a Patreon or a community membership, how much time in the creation of it and then in the execution of it? Um, and is it something, is that where you want to place your time? So that can be very helpful to think about ahead of time. I know it took me a long time as an entrepreneur because to to think like that because we're so idea oriented. Can I get a high five? We're totally uh, idea oriented and we have a million ideas per minute. Yes, we have a million ideas per minute. And that doesn't mean that every idea is worthy of being followed for those reasons. Where do I want to spend my time? And this goes goes back to, I back this up into goals, right? So when we look at our purpose and, and our purpose and mission, even further, our purpose and mission. So when we look at our purpose and mission in life and what it is that we really want to create, I always start there when I'm doing artist development, because what kind of purpose and life plan and goals do we have? And then work from there because that helps us to understand that task that we're working on right now is that in alignment with my purpose and my mission and my life plan right and if it's not we need to take another look is that really where i want to be spending my time so there's a lot to time management i address all of that in module one of step up to the spotlight artist development program with calendars and then in the in module four we start working on the game plan and the life purpose and mission and how we organize the goals and the tasks underneath that there's a really cool um there's a really cool game plan that I use. Uh, it's blank that you can fill in. And then I give you a couple different examples of different kinds of game plans um, fully filled out so that you can get an idea, you know, of, of the different plans that artists have. Um, and you can get that free trial just absolutely for free. It's completely redone. As of last year, step up to the spotlight, kickstart artist development program, and you get the free trial, the entire access to the entire six modules for free for 10 days. And then the cost of the program to keep is $197, and there's a payment plan. So don't hesitate to get this if you're really into time management and goal setting and trying to wrap your brain around how to improve your music career to be able to really do your music full time. So the first thing we talked about was uh, organizing your time into sectors. And this is all on the blog, today's blog that comes out every Wednesday. So it's on the blog. So you can get all the information laid out for you and written out for you there. We talked about how time is perceived differently in cultures, right? And then we talked about, now I'm going to talk about keys to increasing productivity. And the game plans are inside Step Up to the Spotlight uh, program. Uh, so you just go to Linktree um, or you can just go to carrycole.com forward slash step dash up. I put it in the comments on YouTube, um, but it's also on Linktree. So it'll just say free artist development. Just click there and you can get access to all four modules, all six modules for 10 days for free. And the game plans are in module four. Okay. The third uh, tip I'm going to talk today about about time management is keys to increasing productivity. So this is an important one. Studies show that we overestimate what we can do in the short term and we underestimate what we can do in the long term. So studies with disciplinary tasks such as practicing or working out show that a small amount of time Spent every day produces better results than a long amount of longer amount of time a few times a week is an example of how 
when we're thinking of increasing productivity or increasing the results, actually, we're thinking more of the result, we're going to jump into that task maybe for two longer sessions rather than shorter sessions hitting everything, right? So that's an, that's an example of how do we increase productivity is by not overest not overestimating and thinking, oh, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And then we spend an hour, an hour and a half, two hours working on our voice. We really could have hit it for just 20, 30 minutes. And then we could have hit the music musicianship and then we could have hit social media and we could have hit all these other things to be able to actually increase productivity and increase results over time, right? The other thing that I think is extremely important when it comes to increasing productivity, and this is uh, everything that I teach is everything that I practice, okay? So one of the things I learned, and this was probably about 10 years ago, um, I used to say yes to everything. Anybody do that? Give me a thumbs up um, in the comments. You know, that may be a strategy in the beginning. But however, um, learning to prioritize and learning what would be the most important, and again, back to the life plan and the goals and the purpose, is that is saying yes to that in line with my life purpose and my life plan. Because if it isn't learning to say no, you're not losing anything. Okay, you're actually gaining, but it may not look like it in the immediate moment, right? So you have limited time and bandwidth, and it's important to focus on tasks that can help you meet your goal and your bigger purpose, right? So when we, in order to improve productivity, when we learn to say no to other requests or to requests that take your energy, they take away from your energy and don't contribute to your goals, otherwise it can feel like you're always busy, but never able to complete anything uh, that you really need to get done. And you're not seeing that needle move on the bigger projects. The other quick things, and then I'll take questions. A couple other quick things is tidy up your workspace, people, and get rid of the clutter, right? Not much clutter here, right? Because you can't think correctly. So clutter will um, really interfere with your brain's ability to have clarity and focus. And when we work, one of the um, ways to work more productively is to set, you know, uh, an alarm clock and allow yourself to really dive into that subject and topic and that task for that period of time. Don't check your phone. Don't check social media. You'll be more effective. You'll get a lot more done and you won't drain your energy. So tidying up and tracking your time. And that helps you to focus on one task at a time. Um, and this is maybe more the Western mindset than we discovered earlier when I was talking about. And you can go back on YouTube and watch this um, where I was talking about how different cultures perceive time, right? Um, studies say to increase productivity, and again, this is more the Western mindset, is to focus on one task at a time, avoid trying to do multiple things at a time. The human brain is not wired to multitask, so you'll be more productive if you focus on one task at a time rather than switch between multiple tasks. It allows you to take the deeper dive into that particular task and allows your brain to go to work on a deeper level on it, even coming up with better ideas. Um, and the last little thing I'll say, and it's on the blog, so go check it out, is to prioritize. So as an entrepreneur, you're always going to have this long list, right? Am I right? The long list, however, you'll never get it done. And you have to be at peace with that and come to terms with that and accept that, embrace that, okay? And as you start to embrace that, you start to realize the most important thing is to prioritize the top. And the top of the list should be in line with your life purpose and life plan, right? So just look at those top of the top of the list items. The key is always to be reprioritizing, and it may change a little bit given the particular projects that you're working on at that time, right? Prioritize the top, 
delegate the middle and leave the bottom for another life. Okay. Prioritize the top. Is it in line with my life plan, with my life purpose? Delegate the middle when you're able to hire a virtual assistant, have some people helping you, right? Delegate that middle and leave the bottom for another life. It, there'll always be a bottom, so you can just keep it there. I think that's just kind of a fun way to think about it. I'll get to that next life. But you probably, it's not where your passion lies, right? And and if you wanted to, you could delegate. But the bottom of the list is really a powerful list for you to look at from the term, from term, from the perspective of, do I really want to do this? And you know what? I'm not doing it. I don't have to do it. Now, if at the bottom of your list, if what gets shoved down to the bottom of your list is your practice and you're you know, improving and up-leveling your music and working on your songs and stuff, if that's getting pushed, then you really need to have a come to Jesus moment and look at what's important to you, what do you really want, and maybe have a recalibration. Anybody have any questions before I head out? It's always so good to spend time with you guys. I love to see all the enthusiasm in the comments and the chat. And I love to see everybody here. I love that our YouTube is growing. Uh, that's really beautiful to see everybody over there. Just remember that the stream is more solid and stable on YouTube. Um, possibility to visit your master class in New York. I'm wonderful. Oh, thank you. Well, I don't have a master class in New York City at the moment. I live and work here, but ever since the pandemic, I have been um, on Zoom and I'm writing books and doing a whole bunch of other things. So I have less private sessions than I used to. Uh, again, life plan and purpose. And I really need to get my books out. I'm writing a book on vocal health. I'm writing a book on artist development. But you can take part. The best way to take part, Alexa, is to join uh, Step Up and you get that for free. And then join our Artist Sanctuary membership, which is $59 a month. And you meet with me three times a month on Zoom. Matter of fact, uh, tomorrow we have... Um, so there's, there's a mastermind every month with full slide deck and you're in person on Zoom with me and you can ask questions. It's very interactive. And then we have a coaching call. And then we also have uh, every other month we have a special guest speaker. And then we have the other month we have a sounding board where I listen to music. So for 59 bucks a month, it's pretty extraordinary. And you can get my eyes and ears on your music. Next, uh, tomorrow, I'm interviewing Grammy award-winning producer Jeff Bova, good friend of mine, who's an extraordinary producer. Um, worked with some very, very big names, including Celine Dion and Michael Jackson and um, on and on and on. The list goes on and on. Um, Really, so extraordinary. We I interview him tomorrow. So that's the best way to really get my eyes and ears on your music and work with me. You can also set up a vocal analysis or a music review and send in um, demos for me to listen to or music for me to listen to. I will listen ahead of time and come to the call, the 30-minute call, with ideas and plans for you all laid out. Uh, but everybody should just go right now and go to that step up, carrycall.com forward slash step dash up and get the Step Up to Spotlight Artist Development Program for free for 10 days. You get the entire program, get the game plans in module four, get the steps to start in blueprint, um, get uh, my singer's gift. Ha first half of my singer's gift is free in module one, all of those things. And then if you wanna keep it, it's 197. There's three payments of 67. You can't beat it. So um, any questions before I go? Thank you, Daniel. So good to have you here. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Lisa B. Uh, so good to see you, my dear. Um, any questions before I head out? We have a couple of minutes. We don't plan to fail. We fail to plan, right? We overestimate what we can do in the short term. We underestimate what we can do in the long term. Remember to prioritize your list. And are the priori priorities on your list in in line with your life purpose and your life plan? And uh, all of that is supported in the step up program. Oh, you're welcome, Alexa. You're welcome, Amy. Wonderful. Well, so wonderful to spend this time with you. Um, there are some new comments. Let me just see. Oh, Denise, you're welcome. So good to see you. I hope you're working on getting your music out. Um, I hope all of you are. And remember that the most important thing is what your music brings to others, right? Your music is so much bigger than you. 
And sometimes when we're in the day to day, we forget that. Uh, and the calling that we have as a musician is a very special and sacred thing. And you know that you have it because you know it won't leave you alone. It just keeps coming back and keeps coming back and it won't stop until you do something about it. So the most important thing is that you uplevel your skills always. You know, it was interesting working with a um, wonderful artist, Joseph Ede, who I just adore. Um, he's from Los Angeles and he's in our Artist Sanctuary membership. And he also joined the Vocal Freedom Circle which starting in April, the Vocal Freedom Circle will be an evergreen program. I'm not going to lead that live anymore because we're starting our vocal coach certification program in June. So that is a year long program and I'm teaching deep into technique. Vocal Freedom Circle is a prerequisite. So he's in my Vocal Freedom Circle and he started doing the method and he started doing it daily. And, you know, he has several albums out. He's a really good singer. He's a really good performer, really good songwriter. Um, he's been doing this for a while. And as he started to do it, he said, you know, I've never done the daily the way I am now with your method. And the thing that I'm really feeling is if an opportunity came up, I don't have to panic and say, oh, my God, I need to work on my voice to get ready for that. I'm already ready. And this is the most important thing that we don't realize is that when we're doing that daily, just 20 minutes a day of the vocal, 20 to 30 minutes a day of the musician of the instrument, you know, 20, 30 minutes a day of songwriting. When we're doing that regularly, we're keeping up and we're stimulating the muse and we are ready for opportunities. And that's how we can draw opportunities to us because commitment, and this is the last piece I'll leave you with, commitment is the natural magnet of opportunities, right? So when we are not really working on it, we subconsciously push opportunities away because we know we're not ready. So I hope that gives you some inspiration and insight and a special um, extra inspiration for your week, the rest of your week and for your weekend. And come and join me. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube so that you're notified. I go live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Come and join my Step Up to the Spotlight program. It's free for 10 days, the entire program. What, do you, what have you got to lose? If you want to keep the program, it's 197, three payments of 67. Get my entire six modules on artist development. You guys are going to love it. Um, and then come and join our Artist Sanctuary membership where we can work together for 59 bucks a month. All right. And you can always set up a private session. Yes, because I do that as well for a limited amount of people. But I have sessions open uh, usually within uh, a month or a month and a half. I can fit you in. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next week, guys. Mwah! Big love. See you soon. Bye.